This is Lee McGowan, a 48-year-old woman who goes by the moniker Politics Girl. I mean, anyone that knows me will tell you I've been going on about this stuff for years. I mean, like years. This is my jam. How government works. What's going wrong. What's going right. What could be better. Who could help us make it better. You know, this stuff matters. Girl? Seriously? <laughs> sure, okay. Anyway, on October 30th, 2022, Politics Grandma posted a video comparing Democrats to Republicans. Let's just do a quick comparison. The Democrats passed a law to forgive $10,000 worth of student loans. Now, if you're subscribed to my channel, and why wouldn't you be, you hopefully would have seen my breakdown on the matter. But in short, Democrats did not pass a law to forgive student loans. It was an executive decision by Joe Biden, who told the Secretary of the Department of Education to implement it. And that loan forgiveness program has been found to be illegal by a U.S. district judge, and the case is likely on its way to the Supreme Court. The Republicans passed a law that offered $10,000 bounties on women who might have had an abortion. And that's not true either. What she thinks she's referring to is Texas Senate Bill 8, otherwise known as the Texas Heartbeat Act. The law is meant to punish people performing or inducing the procedure after the detection of a fetal heartbeat. The law does not punish patients. Section 171.206. This subchapter may not be construed to authorize the initiation of a cause of action against or the prosecution of a woman on whom an abortion is performed or induced. In other words, the law specifically states that if a woman unpregnants herself, she cannot and will not be punished, only the person who performed it or induced it. And that means that Politics Girl is a spreader of misinformation and disinformation. The Democrats just raised Social Security payments by 8%. No, they didn't. On October 13th, it was announced that Social Security and SSI benefits for approximately 70 million Americans will increase 8.7% in 2023. However, this increase is nothing to brag about. This is the cost of living adjustment, which is directly tied to the Consumer Price Index which measures inflation, which as you know, is currently at a near 40 year high. So while technically record high inflation is because of Democrats passing trillions of dollars in needless spending, they didn't raise social security payments because they care about seniors or whatever. Those payments increased automatically because of a 1973 law signed by a Republican president. The Republicans wanna cut social security entirely. No, they don't. This is a lie propagated by the Democrats. There is no plan or evidence of the Republicans wanting to cut Social Security. Democrats say this every single election cycle. And for educational value, the last time Republicans touched Social Security was back in 1983 when they voted to put a tax on benefits. And you can't blame only Republicans as it was passed by the House, which Democrats controlled with three-fifths majority. It also passed in the Senate, which include yeas from 41 Democrats. What I'm trying to say is the last time Republicans touched Social Security, it was nearly 40 years ago, but Democrats also voted for it too, so I guess I'm just making a point. The Democrats just signed a bill to make prescription drugs more affordable. No, they didn't sign a bill. Democrats voted for the bill, and Joe Biden signed the bill into law. Anyway, let me play that back. The Democrats just signed a bill to make prescription drugs more affordable. So, more affordable prescription drugs for everyone? <laughs> no, of course not. This only applies to some people on Medicare and only some drugs. Let me explain. The Inflation Reduction Act allows Medicare to negotiate drug prices. Sort of. Phase one of this plan is for the Department of Health and Human Services to be able to negotiate prices for 10 Medicare Part D medications. The prices they negotiate will take effect in 2026. In phase two, HHS would negotiate 15 Part D drugs, and those prices would take effect in 2027. Part D medications include anti-seizure drugs, antidepressants, antipsychotics, cancer drugs, HIV AIDS drugs, and immunosuppressants, which are taken after you get an organ transplant. So which Part D medications are going to be targeted? <laughs> Couldn't tell you, because nothing has been negotiated yet. 
which means that we don't know how much Americans are going to save because we don't know the price of those meds because we don't know which meds are going to be targeted. And that's the same with phase three and four, where a total of 35 Part B or D medications go on the negotiation table. And these price changes will take effect in 2028 and 2029. But again, out of those 35 Part B and D medications, we have no idea which ones will be negotiated. <laughs> but don't worry, America, you're gonna save so much money. The Democrats just signed a bill to make prescription drugs more affordable. The Republicans want to repeal the bill and make prescription drugs more expensive. No, they want to repeal that part of the bill because price controls never work as intended. Historically, price controls always cause shortages, reduce product quality, stifle research and development, and they force companies to raise prices on other items that they carry, which makes inflation worse. But who knows? Maybe it'll be different this time. The Democrats have promised that the very first bill they sign if they retain power will be a law codifying Roe v. Wade. Again, Democrats don't sign bills. They can introduce a bill and they can vote on a bill. Sorry, it just bugs me that this politics expert doesn't use the correct terminology. The Democrats have promised that the very first bill they sign if they retain power will be a law codifying Roe v. Wade. Even if Democrats retained power in Congress, which they didn't because Republicans won the House, they would have needed 51 votes in the Senate to break the filibuster to do it. And Senators Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin are opposed to doing so. The Republicans have promised that they will sign a national abortion ban. <laughs> no, they didn't. And it's not Republicans plural, it's Republican singular. And that would be Senator Lindsey Graham, who introduced a bill that would have prevented abortions after three and a half months. With exceptions, of course. And if you can do something for three and a half months, it's not really a ban, it's a limit. And even though the bill could be considered moderate, it wouldn't have had the votes because most in the GOP believe that it should be left up to the states. All the bill accomplished was giving Democrats something to point to a month and a half before the election. And arguably, it helped Republicans lose in states like Pennsylvania. So thanks, Lindsey Graham, you moron. The Democrats just lowered the federal deficit by $1.4 trillion. Uh, but you know that means there's still a deficit, right? You know that deficits are bad, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make an educated guess that she has no idea what a deficit is. <laughs> so let me mansplain. During fiscal year 2022, the federal government brought in $4.9 trillion in revenue, but spent $6.27 trillion, which means that the government has a deficit of $1.38 trillion. Now let's look at fiscal year 2021, where the federal government brought in $4.08 trillion in revenue, but spent $6.85 trillion. The deficit here was $2.77 trillion. So when Politics Girl says that Democrats lowered the deficit by $1.4 trillion, in reality, all that means is that the government spent $1.38 trillion less than the previous year and the lower deficit has nothing to do with anything that the Biden administration implemented. It's purely the result of shrinking or expiring COVID relief. The Republicans have raised the deficit every year they've been in office. Like every year in the history of America? <laughs> no, that's not true. But she's right about one thing. The deficit did increase every year under Trump. However, during his first three years, it was significantly lower than Obama's first four years. And of course, during Trump's fourth year, the deficit was gigantic because of trillions in COVID spending and lower revenue due to the shutdown of the economy. And again, no matter how Biden and the Democrats spin it, the deficit under Joe Biden is the fourth largest deficit ever. Womp womp. The Democrats want common sense gun regulations to keep our citizens safe? Oh, right common sense regulations, which would mean to completely eliminate the manufacture and sales of all semi-automatic rifles to law-abiding citizens. And I would like to point out that in 2013, when the Democrats in the Senate had a chance to reinstate the so-called assault weapons ban, that it failed 40 to 60, which included 15 Democrats voting against. 
So I guess that would mean that some Democrats would be against common sense gun regulations. Go figure. The Republicans want no regulations on any weapons at any time for any reason. So according to Politics Girl, Republicans are okay with fugitives, drug offenders, the mentally ill, stalkers, or people with prior violent felony convictions to be able to purchase weapons. Really? Really? The Republicans want no regulations on any weapons at any time for any reason. But with that said, any regulation that violates the Second Amendment and infringes on the rights of law-abiding Americans to defend themselves is a no-go. The Democrats just signed the biggest climate bill in the country's history to attempt to start saving our dying planet. Again, Democrats in Congress don't sign bills. They passed a bill which resident Joe Biden signed. But more importantly, the earth isn't dying. And if it was dying, do you think that passing a bill and throwing money at it is gonna make any difference? Yeah, good luck with that one, honey. But regardless, the climate bill she's referring to is the Inflation Reduction Act, which is a $369 billion giveaway to green energy interests. And that investment likely won't do a damn thing to save the planet. The Republicans don't care if the planet is dying as long as the corporations who fund them continue to make money. Oh, she's intolerable. But people like her think that the United States is physically able to transition to a clean energy economy when the technology to do so doesn't exist. But what Science Girl fails to realize is that mining for minerals like lithium and cobalt require the use of not only billions of gallons of water, but also, wait for it, fossil fuels. What, did you think that heavy machinery and mining equipment runs off Tesla batteries? The Democrats support Ukraine as they fight the frontline battle of democracy versus autocracy on the world stage. Wow, the Democrats are so noble. And the Republicans think we should pull back on supporting Ukraine and capitulate to the country committing genocide. Unfortunately, there are still many, many Republicans in Congress who are all in on continuing to fund the proxy war with Russia. And at this point, we've sent Ukraine over $40 billion and there's no end in sight. But yeah, let's keep throwing money at it. That'll solve everything. But to claim that Republicans want Ukraine to surrender to Russia is complete BS. Just like everything that comes out of this boomer's mouth. I mean, I could go on and on. Yeah, please don't. Now to say that politics broad is a biased Democrat grifter, well, that's an understatement. And here she is talking about Raphael Warnock and comparing him to Herschel Walker. The fact that Raphael Warnock even has to compete with Herschel Walker for the Georgia Senate tells you all you need to know about politics in 2022. Politics is no longer about policy and leadership. It's not about character or ability. So let's talk about character for a minute. The Honorable Reverend Dr. Senator Raphael Warnock runs Ebenezer Baptist Church. And that church owns this building, Columbia Tower at MLK Village in Atlanta. Warnock is the principal officer of Ebenezer Building Foundation, which manages the building. In October 2022, it was reported by the Washington Free Beacon that a dozen eviction lawsuits had been filed against the tenants of the building over the course of the pandemic. And despite the fact that court records of these eviction filings exist, Warnock lied about it during a debate. You said that reports that a foundation affiliated with your church, Ebenezer Baptist Church, attempted to evict low-income tenants during the pandemic from a, ho a housing complex are not true. But those are reports based on court filings against those tenants, and the state of Georgia is now also investigating that foundation for not properly registering as a charity. So how do you reconcile all those documents with the, with the denial of the story? Well, I'm actually glad you asked that question, because this is one more example of Herschel Walker and his allies lying. Oh, I see. It's not Warnock's fault. It's the damn Herschel Walker. There were no evictions. And the Atlanta Journal-Constitution reported that. And my church has no direct involvement in the day-to-day -day operations of that apartment building. So the moderator asked about the attempts to evict tenants, and Warnock's response was, there were no evictions. And then he claimed that even though his church owns the building, that he has no say whatsoever in whether people get evicted. Right. 
Now, look, if you're going to try and evict tenants for non-payment, that's hardly illegal. I mean, even if you are the head of a church, and even if you tweet about how tenants are at risk of being evicted in the middle of a pandemic, and how people are only concerned about serving their own interests, it's okay. And if you want to sue a tenant for $28.55 in past due rent, that's fine by me. But if you're going to do it, at least man up and take responsibility for it instead of blaming your political opponents. But, you know, that would require having character. The Republican Party has completely abandoned every part of governing for winning. They don't care if their candidates are criminals files, anti-Semites, white supremacists, what? or literally incapable of stringing a sentence together. Uh... And, you know, you talk about the, 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 liber, the liberty of, of sta a statue um, has never had a, an inscription inside that said, you know, send your, your tired, huddered... Uh, so Politics Girl is claiming that Herschel Walker is incapable of stringing a sentence together and that Republicans will vote for anybody. But at the same time, Democrats voted for John Fetterman. But that's Democrat playbook tactic number one. Accuse the other side of that which you are guilty. Anyway, that's it for now. Special thanks to Poofy for her help with the script. Follow me on Twitter at Don't Walk Run, and be sure that you're still subscribed to the channel. As always, I hope to see you next time. If there is next time.